In this lecture, we will discuss the example problem on PERT method. Let's see the problem. Following network diagram represents the activities associated with the project. So here it is given the network diagram and the different activities along with the various estimated types. That is the T0 optimistic type, TP pessimistic type and TM is the most likely type. Then have to determine the expected completion time and variance of the each activity and the earliest and latest expected time of the each event, critical path and also we determine the probability of expected completion time of the project if the original scheduled, scheduled time of completing the project is 41.5 weeks. And finally, I also have to determine the duration of the project that will have the 90% of chance of being completed. Let's see the solution. So first we have to calculate the expected duration of each activity using the formula TE equal to T0 plus 4TM plus TP divided by 6. And also we calculate the expected variance that is sigma square using the formula TP minus T0 divided by 6 whole square for the each activity. First we have to calculate the TE and sigma square for the activity A. So TE is the T0 plus 4TM plus TP. So for the activity A, T0 is the 5. So TM is the 8 and TP is the 10. So TE will become the, so T0 5 plus TM 8 4 into 8 plus TP 10 divided by 6 it will give the 7.8 for B activity it is the so 18 plus 4 into 20 plus 22 divided by 6 that is the 20 similarly for activity C TE value will come the 33 and activity D it will come the 18 and activity E it is 20 and activity F it is the 9. Activity G that is the TE value is the 9.8. Activity H TE value is the 8 and activity I TE value is the 4. Similarly we calculate the sigma square for the all the activities. First we have to see the sigma square for the activity A that is the TP minus T0 by 6 whole square. Here TP is the 10 and T0 is the 5. So 10 minus 5 divided by 6 for 5 by 6 whole square then that value is the 0 0.696. Similarly for the activity B 0. Point, so 4.44. For activity C 5.429. For activity D 0. 0.443. For activity E 2.78. For activity F 1. For activity G 0. 0.694 and activity H 0 0.311 and activity I 0 0.311. Next indicate the these TE values on the network diagram and calculate the earliest time and latest time for each activity. First we determine the earliest start time and earliest finish time by forward pass method. And we will start the from the activity A which begins from the first event. And earliest start time for the beginning activity is 0. So here earliest start time for the activity A is the 0. And finish time will become the 0 plus 7.8 that is the 7.8. Next we have to determine the activity B. For activity B, so start time is the 0 and finish time will become the 0 plus 20, it is the 20. Next we look for the activity C. For activity C, earlier start time is the 0 and finish time 0 plus 33, it is the 33. Next we look for the activity D. For activity D, start time is the 7.8 and the finish time is the 7.8 plus 80 it is the 25.8 next we look for the activity e for activity e 
start time is the 7.8 and finish it time will become the 7.8 plus 20 it is the 27.8 next we look for the activity f for activity f start time is the 20 and finish it time will become the 29 here observe the event 6 is event 6 is the merge event for the activities f and e so among these two values 29 and 27.8 we have to consider the maximum finish time that is the 29 next we have to look for the activity g for activity g start time is the 33 and finish time will become the 33 plus 9.8 that is the 42.8 next we have to look for the activity h for activity h start time is the 25.8 and finish time will become the 33.8 next activity i for activity i start time is the 29 and finish time will become the 29 plus 4 that is the 33 here observe that one the event 7 is the merge event for the activities i h and g so among the all the finish times we have to consider the maximum finish time that is the 42.8 so finish time at the event 7 is the maximum time that is 42.8 next we determine the latest start time and latest finish time by the backward pass method here we will begin from the last event that is the event 7 and one more thing here we have to considering the earliest finish time will become the latest finish time so latest finish time at event 7 is the 42.8 so next we have to determine the so latest start time for the activity i for activity i finish time is the 42.8 and start time will become the 42.8 minus 4 that is 38.8 next for the activity h for activity h start time is the sorry latest finish time is the 42.8 start time will become the 42.8 minus 8 that is the 34.8 and next one is the activity g latest finish time is the 42.8 and start time will become the 42.8 minus 9.8 that is the 33 next we have to look for the activity f for activity f finish time is the 38.8 and start time will become the 38.8 minus 9 it is the 29.8 next for the activity e for activity e so finish time is the 38.8 start time will become the 38.8 minus 20 that is the 18.8 next we look for the activity d for activity D, finish time is the 34.8 and the start time will become the 34.8 minus 18, it is the 16.8. Here observe the event 2 is the burst event for the activity E and D. So among these two values, I have to consider the minimum start time that is the 16.8. So here, latest start time at event 2 is the 16.8. Next, we have to look for the activity c for activity c start time is the 33 and finish time is the 33 minus 33 it is the 0 next we look for the activity b for activity b start time is the 29.8 sorry finish time is the 29.8 start time will become the 29.8 minus 20 it is the 9.8 next we look for the activity a for activity a Finish time is the 16.8. Start time will become the 16.8 minus 7.8. It is the 9. So here observe the event 1 is the burst event for the activities A, B, C. So among these three values are to consider the minimum start time that is the 0. So latest start time for the event 1 is the 0. Next we find the critical path and identify the critical activities we know that for the critical activities which are lies on the critical path its earliest event time equal to the latest event time so here observe that one the for activities c and g its earliest events time is 
equal to the latest event type. So here observe that one, the for activities C and G, its earliest time is equal to the latest event type. Then here activities C and G are the critical activities. Its critical path is the 147. Then the expected project duration is the so length of the this critical path that is the 33 plus 9.8. So that is the 42.8 weeks. Next we determine the probability of expected completion time of the project. If the original scheduled time of completing the project is 41.5 weeks. For this first we have to calculate the project length variance sigma square. Which is the sum of variance of the all the critical activities. So here critical activities are the. C and G and also I have to find the standard deviation of the project length sigma. So project length variance sigma square is the summation of variance of the critical activity C and G. So sigma square for the activity C is the 5.429 and sigma square for the activity G is 0 0.694. Then sigma square that is the project length variance sigma square is the 5.429 plus 0 0.694. Then sigma square value is the 6.123 and sigma value is the 2.4744. Next we calculate the standard normal variable that is the capital D equal to Ts minus Te by sigma. Ts is the scheduled time and Te is the expected project length and sigma is the standard deviation of the project length. So TS is given in the data that is the 41.5 weeks and TE who determine that is the 42.8 weeks and sigma also we are determined that value is the 2.4744. Then have to substitute this TS and TE and sigma values in the normal variable equation we will get the D equal to 41.5 minus 42.8 divided by 2.4744 which is equal to the minus 0 0.52. Then the probability that the project will completed in 41.5 weeks is given by probability of Z is less than or equal to the D that is the standard normal variable. So probability of Z is less than or equal to minus 0 0.52. So for the probability of the z is less than or equal to 0 0.52 minus 0 0.52 we will determine by the observing the standard normal distribution table. So this is the normal standard distribution table. Here observe the value of the minus 0 0.52. So it is the minus 0 0.5 and this is the 0 0.02. Then minus 0. 52 value is the 0 0.3015. So then the probability of Z is less than or equal to minus 0 0.52 equal to the 0 0.3015. Then the probability that the project can be completed in less than or equal to 41.5 weeks is the 0. 3048. Next we determine the project so duration will have 95 95% 95 chance of being completed which is the probability of z less than or equal to the Ts minus T e sigma equal to 0 0.95. It is given the 95% probability that is the 0 0.95. So from the standard normal distribution table 0.95 value will get the so at the z value 1.64 d value is the 1.64 we know that when the d equal to ts minus te divided by sigma we know the te value and sigma value and d value also we know then we determine the ts value from this equation we will get the ts value is the 
46.85 weeks thank you